Wisdom is Applied Sciences, so you know what time it is. It's time for this topic where we got to talk about how much protein you actually need. We're going to take a deep dive into this, right? So I'm going to cover three points. Number one, talking about the function of protein in the body and how it's used. Number two, we're going to talk about carbs versus fat and how those are used as well as stored in the body. And then finally, number three, I'm going to talk about how protein is overconsumed and overestimated in the human diet. All right, so let's get into it. Let's start with protein. Protein is functionally like bricks. It is the necessary resources to develop new tissue, right? New protein, new bone, new hair, all that kind of stuff, right? But in, in particular, when we're talking about muscle building, protein is put into the body, the body breaks it down and metabolizes it, converting it into what's called amino acids. Now, amino acids have all types of functions in the body that regulate all types of things in the body, but in regards to muscle building, there are three amino acids, key amino acids, right? Called branch chain amino acids. This is leucine, isoleucine, and valine. These are the three branch chain amino acids that build new muscle tissue. Now, your body does not store protein. It's very important to understand that. So what happens is your body will break down that protein into those amino acids and then use however much of those amino acids it needs. What happens to the rest of the amino acids is whatever isn't used is disregarded. It's flushed out of the body, right? It comes out in your feces and your urine. Now let's get into a conversation about carbohydrates versus fats, okay? Now, out of the three macronutrients, the carbohydrates and the fats are the primary sources of energy that the body uses to function. Carbohydrates and fat both break down into what's called glucose. Sometimes people refer to this as sugar, but for the purposes of this conversation, I'm just gonna stick to glucose and not use the word sugar because that's not exactly an accurate term to call it sugar, all right? Now, the key differences between carbohydrates and fat is the fact that your body finds it most easiest to use carbohydrates as energy. Fat is a little bit more complicated, right? So for example, carbohydrates breaks down into two molecules, typically glucose and fructose. It's usually a 50-50 split. Whereas with fat, it's at least a chain of three molecules. So, your body tends to take the path of least resistance using carbohydrates as that upfront energy source. Your carbohydrates fuels your training, right? This serves as immediate energy for strength training, heavy weight lifting, sprinting, jumping, those different types of athletic performances. Even studying that requires a lot of brain power and learning and processing, right? Your body needs a lot of glucose to do that. Now, fat is used more so at rest, right? When you're not training or when you're sleeping, right? So that's essential for recovery and hormone stabilization, things of that nature. As far as how carbohydrates and fats are stored in the body, that's also very important to understand the differences between these two. For example, carbohydrates are stored as something called glycogen, right? This is stored glucose. That's stored in the muscle, it's stored in your brain, it's stored in your spine and in your liver, okay? When you store carbohydrates in something like muscle, the muscle looks larger, it looks fuller, okay? If you're in the bodybuilding community, you know the importance of having that fullness in your physique. Now, the way that fat is stored, Fat is primarily stored in your liver, okay? It's also stored subcutaneously under your skin. <clears throat> fat is also stored, in not such a good way, attached to your organs. This is known as visceral fat. 
And of course, the worst type of storage for fat is when fat is stored in muscle tissue. If your body is storing fat in muscle tissue to an unhealthy degree, this is an indicator of insulin resistance, pre-diabetes, and full-blown diabetes, right? In particular, type 2 diabetes. So in conclusion, it's great to store carbs, not so great to store fat. Now we got to get into the overestimation and overconsumption of protein, which leads to, unfortunately, protein wasting. I'm going to start here. Your body only uses what it needs. And being that the pro your body doesn't store protein, it's going to get rid of whatever it doesn't use. Now, that extra protein is either going to get removed from the body via your feces or your urine, or it's going to get broken down into glucose through a process known as glucogenesis. So here's a good example, and you can probably relate to this. Let's say you're 160 pounds, and you shoot to get 160 grams of protein a day into your diet. Out of that 160 grams, what if your body only used 100 of those grams? That means that you just consumed, needlessly, 60 extra grams of protein for really no reason. Now imagine if you were doing that on a daily basis through protein shakes. Not only are you protein wasting, but you're also wasting money on protein supplements that you don't even need. Now, in those protein shakes, if your body is just turning that into glucose anyway, why not just get that extra glucose from things like vegetables and fruits? Foods where you get those extra antioxidants, those enzymes, those probiotics, those prebiotics, vitamins and essential minerals that you need in order to optimize your health and your recovery and of course the muscle building process. Seems like the extra fruit and vegetables rather than the extra protein would be a much better diet strategy if we're being smart about this. So this is why it's very important to understand that more does not equal better because we don't want to be wasteful when we're trying to optimize for those gains. So let's put a bow on it. How much protein do you really need? Now, according to the scientific research, the opinions vary, right? But the common trend that the entire scientific community agrees on is that your body really only needs in between one gram of protein per kilogram of lean mass or 1.8 at the most. Okay? So this will serve as a big relief to you if you're like 180 pounds or 200 pounds and trying to get 200 grams of protein a day in your diet. Now your protein consumption varies according to your training level, right? How advanced are you in your training? If you're a beginner or you really don't have much muscle mass on you to begin with, one gram of protein per kilogram of lean mass is plenty. If you're more advanced, you've been training for several years, you're very close to your genetic potential, well then, it would be good to target in between 1.6 and 1.8 grams of protein per kilogram of lean mass. I say per kilogram of lean mass because this is very important when we're talking about body composition. How much of your body is lean mass and how much is not? So for example, if you're 210 pounds or something like that, but your lean mass is only 135 or 140 pounds or even 150, right? You wouldn't include your fat mass in your conclusion because you're not consuming protein in order to feed and sustain your fat mass. You're trying to sustain and grow your lean mass. 
So what I would do is, let's say I am 180 pounds. I like to use this example. But out of that 180 pounds, I have 140 pounds of lean mass. What I would do, because we're talking about grams of protein, right? So that implies the metric system. So let's talk metric. Out of that 140 pounds of lean mass, I'm going to take that 140 pounds and I'm going to divide it by 2.2 in order to get my weight in kilograms. Just to clarify, one kilogram is 2.2 pounds. That's why we would do the math that way. So roughly half would be the number. So if it's 140 pounds, then your weight would roughly be half that. Okay, half that number, whatever half of 140 is. But to be exact, you do the 2.2, not just the two, right? So once you've gotten your weight in kilograms, if your weight in kilograms is 65 kilograms or so, then at a minimum, you would need 65 grams of protein per day. It's a good starting point, especially if you're a beginner. And as you become more intermediate and you become more advanced, that's when you can scale up that number to that upper end of that 